So I've been working a little bit here and there on this Expo app. Right now we have the ability for someone to go in and find a climbing gym. And then you can go and look at some of the most recent bouldering routes, top rope or lead routes. Uh, you can click on bouldering and that'll take you to the gym route search page where you can then toggle through top rope, bouldering, lead. You can change the uh, rating to look through that. Clear it out to get all the ratings. You can click on these. You can project a route. You can mark it as sent. You can like it. You can go to your projects and also view that. So we got some decent functionality here. I'm kind of working on like the user profile page as well. Um, but the thing I wanted to kind of demo in this video is give you some strategies in terms of prompting and context engineering because I would say 95% of all this app was just created using Claude in Agenta Coding. Claude 2, Sonnet 4.5, like it, it works pretty well, right? And I have to come through and tweak some stuff once in a while, but like literally all the API endpoints, the controllers, the persistence layer, the schema, the front end routes with the mobile app, like this is all done through Claude. Now I do wanna keep this video a little bit short, so I'm gonna show you some of my strategies I like to do when prompting with Claude code or cursor agent mode. So we have a bug here. If I go to my comment section as a user, I should be able to type in a comment and press post. But notice it says fail to add comment. So if you wanted to prompt your way to a solution and like give it the right context so that it can be successful on the first attempt, some strategies I would recommend is first of all, find the component that's related to this form. So if you have good intellectual control over your code base, you should know what component that is. In my case, I have one called route detail and I can open this file. And if you're using Claude code, you'll see down here, it says in route detail.tsx. So you're already connected with the file and anything you prompt is gonna use the whole file for context. Now, sometimes you can actually go through and highlight some stuff and that will actually also narrow down or hone down your context to those 12 lines selected. In our case, I'm just gonna let it go over the whole file and probably try to fix up where it might find this issue. All right, so again, let's just give it some context. I'm gonna say, when I try to post a comment, I get an error that says, and then you can go ahead and either, you know, snap in a screenshot of this or just say failed to add comment. Now, in all honesty, I could probably kick this prompt off and it'll just work. It'll probably fix the issue and we'll be good. But in terms of prompting and context engineering, it's always good to just go one step further and find out like what could be going wrong here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go to my API. I'm gonna clear it out. And I wanna check, is it even making a request to my API? And notice that I'm not getting any logs. So I'm gonna give that as additional context to Claude. And I'm gonna say, I notice it's not even making an API request to my backend. Now, I think this is enough context for it to fix it, and I would probably just kick this off. Let's just do that. I'm gonna kick off this uh, prompt and see if we can kind of fix that issue. And the technique I'm showing right here is basically what I do for a lot of my features. Like I first go and find the relevant files. Maybe there's one, maybe there's two or three files, and I will paste them as context to Claude Code or Cursor. And then I will prompt and give it more information about like what I'm looking for. And the more specific you make each little request in your iterations, you're going to get better results in my opinion. So let's try this out. It says it might have fixed it. Um, I'm going to click on post and now it's actually posting the comment. I'm going to try to delete it and make sure that works. Okay, cool. So that fixed the issue and you can go over here to your changes. It's always good to look at the changes. It looks like we were passing a project ID to this mutation and instead it needs a route ID. This could quickly have been caught if I just read through the file and looked at any TypeScript errors. I'm guessing this would have, you know, lit up red with the TypeScript error. So let's go ahead and keep on building upon this a little bit, give you some more strategies I like to do. So I'm gonna say testing and I'm gonna paste post. So notice right here, we don't have like an avatar of what user left this comment. We don't have a, a timestamp. So those are two things I would like to add in. Now at this point, the context window has a bunch of information in it that's related to fixing that bug. Do you want that included in your next prompt? In this case, I would probably say no. So definitely clear out the context window so you start fresh. And again, make sure you're connected to your IDE. Make sure you have the same route open or the file open. And in this particular instance, I would probably try to find where the comments are being displayed. So I search for dot .map. It takes me right to where we're looping over the comments. And then what I would probably do here is you could just go ahead and grab this whole thing, like you could just go ahead and collapse it. I'll just highlight this. So now we have 30 selected lines. I'm gonna say, 
I might just speech the text to have it be implemented. Can you also display a avatar placeholder for the user's uh, account image? Just use a placeholder image for now. Also show a timestamp formatted in such a way that says like five seconds ago, five days ago. You can bring in date F in S or whatever date library you need to get that going. And then finally, if someone clicks on the avatar or their username, make sure the username is also displayed in the comment, take them to that user's profile route. If we don't already have a route for profile slash ID, go ahead and create one. All right, so here's a decently large feature. I mean, like, is it really that hard to add an avatar image and then a name and then a timestamp, bring in date F FNS, and then also like have it redirect to a new route, create the new route, I don't know. But let's just go ahead and kick this off and um, see how it works. All right, so here is the change when it's fully done. I have the comment, we can see their comment, their avatar, you can click it, and that'll take it to their profile page. There is some work that needs to be done on the profile page, but again, I didn't really prompt it or give it specific details about how I wanted the, the modal to be. Um, it is missing the date though. I'm not sure why the date's not showing up. So I think maybe adding some additional context, like let's take a, take a screenshot of it and I'll paste this in. There doesn't seem to be a timestamp of when the comment was posted. Could you add that in like I asked? And notice how I'm gonna keep the same context window so it already knows like the files that it had to change to implement this feature. It knows where in the route detail it had the update to like add this to the comment. All right, I think the text color was just white, so it like wasn't really showing up, but I think this feature is basically implemented now. So now at this point, go to get diff and like read the changes and review them, make sure they seem good. For the most part, I would say front end code is very like uh, low risk. If they add something that looks a little bad, you can just reprompt it to have it refactor it. Um, for back end code, I would be very specific about looking for security vulnerabilities, stuff like that. Um, but this is pretty straightforward. It looks like it's all working pretty good. So I'd probably add all these in. And then I would also probably just commit this. So like fixing comments, I don't know. You probably want a descriptive comment, but uh, that's probably as far as I'm gonna take that. So in a nutshell, that's basically what I consider agent decoding. Like if you just follow that same flow where you have the right files and context already open, you have it linked to your IDE, you add those as context, you take a screenshot to give it additional context, and then you ask it to make small iterative changes, very specific changes, and verify that they work after they're done. Again, like what I asked it to do, it basically one-shotted it, except for the color of the text here, it made the wrong color. So it's not perfect. You do have to go and like babysit it, but I will do this in one terminal and sometimes I'll even have like four or five terminals open and I will be adding and fixing bugs and making changes to various pages at the same time. So that's my workflow. And again, commit after stuff is done and you've tested it and it seems good. Small commits, push them often. If you're on a team, maybe you want to make a different branch or a pull request for all this uh, as it's kind of changing through. And then the last thing is be very vigilant and review the code. If you have some experience, maybe you're in mid or senior, like you have seen, you know, the things that the LLMs can give you. And often it will just throw in magic numbers. It'll give you some bad code and you have to go through and you have to prompt it to refactor it to apply better patterns. But at some point your code base will get a nice structure to it and the LLM will use the existing structure so it builds out new features using that. And then you'll get less and less of like random magic numbers added everywhere. You'll get less like any types added to your code base. And that's what I've seen with many projects that I vibe coded or agentic coded along the way is when you first start off, you hit roadblock after roadblock. But once you have a solid foundation of your project, it's just smooth sailing for the most part especially for these really simple CRUD features, which let's be honest, a majority of web applications and mobile apps are probably just CRUD wrappers uh, with a nice user interface. By the way, you can check out agenticjumpstart.com if you want more information about how I do all this agentic coding. Overall, you could save money and not even buy this and just follow the tips I just gave in this video. Um, but I will talk about how to set up cursor, how to set up cloud code, how to use all the different tools and features of those two tools and then finally, we're going to build out a full stack application and you will get access to a lot of these projects that I've been kind of vibe coding uh, on a Git repo. So you can kind of like clone them and have a nice starting point if you want a nice jumpstart uh, project. So I don't know, you can join the waitlist. I won't even promise I'm going to actually finish this course because at this point, like agent decoding is so straightforward. I don't think it really deserves someone to teach you how to do it. You literally just do exactly what I showed you and you'll get the results that I, I'm getting. If you're not getting the results I'm getting, I don't know what to tell you because I've been doing this since 
Bursar came out with the composer mode, and that was like a year and a half ago, or maybe even two years now. I don't know. I've been doing this agentic coding, vibe coding stuff since it first started popping up, and I, it's there's not that much magic to it. There's really not that much magic to it. You just prompt, ask it to make changes, give it context, and you get good results. All right, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Have a good day, and happy coding.